That game will tip at about 350, and we will get you there in time for that one. But we'll send you off to Seattle for Nevada and Gonzaga right after this. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by the United States Army, Gatorade, Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed, and by the new Chevrolets. Full East Sports Bar, your home for NCAA playoff action. from Seattle, Washington, Key Arena. Second round action from the St. Louis bracket. Number two seed, Gonzaga, taking on 10th seed at Nevada. Winner here will take on the survivor of the Georgia Tech-Boston College matchup. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. And first, for the Wolfpack, Fazekas, Pinckney, Snyder, Hill, Thomas, and Okasin. And the Bulldogs from Gonzaga have Violet, Turioff, Knight, Bankhead, and Steph. Trent Johnson, the head man of the Nevada Wolfpack, led them to their first ever NCAA tournament win on Thursday night. Victory over Michigan State. And Mark Few trying to get Gonzaga into the Sweet 16 for the fourth time over the last six years. John Clockerty, Curtis Shaw, Kerry Sitton, the officials here at Key Arena. Ian Eagle, along with Jim Spadarco and Greg Kelsey. Gonzaga, the two seed, highest seed they have ever had in NCAA tournament play, and we are underway from Seattle. And an interesting beginning to this basketball game. Guy named Steph has had problems shooting the basketball, but watch him to direct the traffic for the Zags and make it happen with their inside game right off the bat. To the blocks, Surely off travel, and a turnover. One of the things Mark Few talked about his team, the Zags, he really wants them to execute better than they did the other night, but more importantly, he wants them to set screens early in this basketball game to find guys underneath. Cut to Snyder, extra feed, and Pickney, the open man for the Deuce. Now on the other side of the floor, Snyder is a great basketball player. All eyes are going to be on him from the Zags defensively, so you'll see a little, a little bit of him passing the basketball just like that. Here's Violet with a jump hook, count it, and one. Early on, Ian Gonzaga, twice they had the basketball. What did they do with it? They went right to the blocks. They think they're strong enough and big enough to really deal down low with Nevada at the defensive end. Kirk Snyder called on the foul. Violet at the line, 76%. He's coming off a double-double in the victory over Valparaiso in the first round. 13 points, 10 rebounds, but Gonzaga in that game, Jimmy, got off to a slugger start. Yeah, they did, and that's one of the things in terms of speaking with Coach Few. I mean, he's happy with this team, obviously, their production that they get, but he wants everybody to be involved. Keep in mind, they're a very good bench team, like we saw the other night. If they're playing, the starters are getting off sluggish. You may see them go to their bench. Snyder, tough shot and a fadeaway. Too strong. Yeah, too, too strong, and he had a size advantage over Bank to take him in a little closer than going away against the smaller player. Tied at two. Here's Violet against Pickney. Pickney trying to hold his ground. Bank shot doesn't go. Violet the follow. Off the rim. And rebounded by Snyder. Seventh all-time meeting between these two schools. Gonzaga leads the series 4-2. Snyder in heavy traffic draws the foul. Well, you look at the Zags' keys to their games, establish that low post play that we talked about. Blake Steph has had problems shooting the basketball in the NCAA tournament and the bench play. Get guys involved. If the starters don't play well for Mark Few, they're going to get some guys off the bench who were very productive, especially in the first half the other night. Earl Knight called on the personal foul for Gonzaga. And Snyder, who scored 19 points in that win over Michigan State, but only shot at 6 of 17 from the field. Big bucket down the stretch, and you saw what Nevada did to the free throw line in that first round win. Well, I happened to ask uh, Trent Johnson, the coach, about Snyder with that kind of concept on in terms of him starting 0 for 5. He said, this kid has confidence. He's really grown. Six weeks ago, he might have gone into a little bit of a shell, but he steps up, and he's going to continue to play that way. It's the easy prediction to make. 4-2 lead, Nevada. Terry up, gets it off. Knight the Seattle native. No good. And 
and here comes Okuson the other way. Good decision there by Okuson. Three on two break, but the Zags closed them quickly. Open look at a three. Fazekas is fouled by Terrio. Let's talk about the keys to the game from the Nevada perspective. Well, a, a couple of things pop into mind in terms of early the way this has been set up. You have to defend the blocks. We talked about the Zags down in the offensive end. We'll put the spotlight on Snyder because obviously he has to step it up also in keeping the crowd quiet. This is a road game for Nevada right now for all intents and purposes. And Trent Johnson basically said before this basketball game, he said, hey, they're a good team. There's no question about it. They're a great basketball team. I'm not going to come in here and try to do different things. I want to start off playing straight up, see what happens, and I'll make some adjustments as I go along. Fazekas had the big second half in that win over Michigan State. He splits a pair at the line as Turioff was called on his first foul. And Nevada has taken a 5-2 lead. Gondaga riding a 21-game winning streak, the longest in the nation. Just over two minutes going by here in Seattle. Nice matchup with Hill, Thomas, and Steph to keep an eye on right here. Look at this pressure defensively. Here's Steph. Nevada, five. Gonzaga, two. Bankhead, a jumper. Second juice for Gonzaga. 17-37 to go. First half. Matt Fiorina. Mark, you talked about the screens. That was a great screen. Okuson got caught up on it. Fazek is off the mark for Nevada. Pickney gets it back. Contact. Second foul on Turioff. And that's a good call by Curtis Shaw. Turioff did not have great position. They attack. Sometimes you see crazy plays after a missed shot that kick out. The ball comes out. Watch him slide. He's sliding, trying with an intent to get in front of Pinkney going to the basket, but the left side of his body and the leg in particular was out and extended. Good ball. Loney Turriot coming off a 15-point performance in the first round win over Valpo. Now on the bench at the 17-20 mark of the first half. Two fouls. Nevada up by one, spreading the floor. Okuson a long three. No. Earl Mike, the rebound. He hit a big shot the other night at the end of that basketball game, but two for seven from three, so he will shoot the basketball. He's confident, even if he's struggling from outside percentage-wise. Nevada leads it 5-4. Mallon into the game for Turioff, but he drills it. A three with a freshman from Spokane. Well, it came off the bench. Three out of four shooting the other night. So a guy who's very, very confident. This is a deep zag basketball team. So even when the start is, as we touched on, one or two or three guys aren't playing well, they go eight, nine, ten deep. So they keep some fresh troops in there. And a 7-5 Gonzaga lead. Snyder looking to break down Bankhead. Bill Thomas having some knee troubles. Didn't practice yesterday. Fazekas, count it, and one. Terrific skills around the basket. Fazekas just looks for the basketball. He watches the basketball and then is good enough to deliver with the, the ball down low in the blocks. Coming up. Some of you will see Manhattan taking on Wake Forest. The Jaspers on to the second round in the East Rutherford bracket. Tip off at 3.52 Eastern time. Sean Mallon called on his first foul. And now Fazekas back to the free throw line. 77% shooter. Freshman from Arvada, Colorado. And he completes the three-point play. And Mark Few was concerned about his play. I mean, he doesn't look like he can get the job done because he's slight with the body, but he is very, very good down low and good hands and good shooting touch. Bankhead, swatted by Pickney. Good help there by Oakerson also. Hill Thomas, the leaner. Count it, and a foul. Well, what we're seeing here is a confident basketball team. Forget about the records for the first four minutes of this coming into this basketball game. Okuson gets a hand in, Pinky steps across, and Okuson with a quick delivery. And watch defensively again. Step, he drifted to his left. Player goes to his right. Good call by the officials again, and a good finish by Hill Thomas going to the hoop aggressively. Oakland, California native, completes the three-point play, the conventional one. 11-7, Nevada. He's going to be a plus at the offensive end, but watch him defensively. I think he's probably one of the real keys one-on-one -on -one with this matchup on holding step down. Already at the line six times, and another steal for Nevada. Look at the control break, guy, and they're under control, keeping an eye on everything. Snyder off balance. Foul called out front, and Knight shaking his head on the defensive end. Second foul on Earl Knight, trying to deal with the WAC player of the year, Kirk Snyder. 
And the WAC Player of the Year, as you mentioned, is a tough out when it comes to guarding him because he has some very nice tools. That last trip down the floor, you saw him handling the basketball in the backcourt, brought it up to the attack area, and did you notice the lift he had on that jump shot? Makes it very difficult to block his shot. And he has come up big in big games this season for Nevada, including 29 in the December victory over nationally ranked Kansas. Knight takes a seat for Gonzaga. He's replaced by Tony Skinner. Well, he did start 0 for 5 against Michigan State the other night. And But every shot he took that missed looked to me as if in his mind he's thinking every shot he takes is going down. Good start. 13-7 Nevada leading Gonzaga. First half action will continue after this from Seattle. Rejoining from Key Arena, 13-7 Nevada. I and Eagle Jim Spinarco, Greg Kelser with you. Uh, major question coming in. Could Nevada handle this crowd? They've been unfazed so far. They have been, and I think from an offensive standpoint, they're doing well defensively, though. Look at the close they have right there. Once again, pretty good action defensively, but also on the tip. A nice job by the Zags pulling it off. Tony Skinner able to follow the miss from Violet. Early foul trouble for Gonzaga. Rody Cherioff and Earl Knight, two starters on the bench with two fouls each. Okerson, the running one-hander. Against the 2-3 zone, a little switch up. Did you notice Okerson floating towards Bankhead to try to draw some contact? Nice little slice between the front two. He had 14 in the win over Michigan State. Bankhead feeding the post. Violet inside. He's throwing. You know, when I when put teams established themselves, I was talking to Mark Few, and he says, we like to establish ourselves in the blocks. And I said, you did a pretty good job of that the other night in the beginning of the game. He says, that's what we do year in and year out. They were down, but they're going to continue to go to their strength as the blocks. We'll see how it develops. As for Nevada, they came into this tournament a hot team. They've now won 15 of their last 17 games. 14 to shoot. I think they got to get Snyder in a spot on the wing where he can shoot over these two guards at the top of the key. Timer down to seven. Snyder on a pass for Hill Thomas. Shot clock at four. Pickney lets it fly and connects. A long two-pointer. Well, this is a very controlled offense against the zone. There is no rattle. There's patience at the offensive end for Nevada. They are shooting it at 56%. Skinner rims out on a three. Mellon can't follow it. You see the hands of Fazekas just then, too. A little tip to himself. Snyder, early offense to Pickney. Turns and hits. Wow. He had the big first half against Michigan State. Finished with 13, but he was the go-to guy offensively in the first half. I always look early in basketball games for a sign of confidence, either individually or collectively. And right now you can see a collective confidence, and it's being triggered by this defensive effort that they're putting on so far. The man up by eight. The step through. Travel call against Violet. Nevada, five for its last five from the field. And look at the patience. You bobble the basketball, the little separation right there. He's smart enough and under control enough to just step away and let the play develop. A lot of guys would have taken that ball and really had some problems with that play. Coming up, more second round action. Number 12, Manhattan against fourth seeded Wake Forest in the E. Rutherford bracket here on CBS. Sean Paul has checked into the game for Nevada. Open look, Kirk Snyder. And a loose ball foul. It is Paul getting the body in on Violet. His first. Take a listen to the fans starting to get warmed up a little bit. Trent Johnson, you know, it's, a, it's funny talking to coaches before a game sometimes too. He wasn't overconfident, but he was very confident in terms of, hey, I'm, I'm proud of these guys that worked hard all season long. We're ready for the challenge. And so far, they have answered. The freshman, Adam Morrison, has checked in for Gonzaga. This is Morrison against Snyder. Nevada up by eight. Blake Stepp yet to get involved on the offensive end. Morrison lines it up. No good for three. And a foul call that's going the other way. Mallon was in the fray, as was Skinner. It will be Skinner picking up the personal, his first. And boy, a little turning point right now with the team fouls all of a sudden. 17 fouls on the Zags. Now what does that mean for Nevada? 
You want to keep going to the basket. You have plenty of time right now. With just a second to 13 minutes left in the first where you're at the bonus. You must take advantage at against a very good team early in a basketball game. Pickney, one and one, 72% shooter. Sure. And obviously you have to make the foul shots. 19 to 11. Number 10 seed, Wolfpack leading Gonzaga. Violet turns for two. Boys, he's steady. He's got very good footwork and his size, a nice combination of the footwork, the power game down low, and they look for him and get him the basketball where he can operate. He is three of six from the field. Six points for Corey Violet out of Boise, Idaho. Still in the zone, the Zags. Snyder using the screen, needs some help. Okuson, pump fake. He got step leaning, and Okuson drills the jumper. Not only did he get him leaning, but he had him running to him. And the best thing you could do as a guard when you see a defender running to you, go right at him. Step, spin move, that doesn't go. Blake Step continues to have problems on the offensive end in NCAA tournament play. Okuson, oh, oh. up, pump for three. Okuson, look at the body language he's showing. I'll tell you, these guys came ready to play. I got a tip the hat not only for the guys on the bench, but the guys who are playing the game, they are flat out executing with a lot of fun and energy. They hadn't been to the NCAA tournament since 1985. They're making the most of it so far this year. Nevada on a 9-2 run. They've opened up an 11-point lead. Under 12 minutes to go. First half here at Key Arena in Seattle. Ball movement for Gonzaga. Skinner looking down low. Ronnie Cherry off with two fouls has checked back in and a foul called out front. Against Nevada. Washington now in for Nevada. We'll step aside. Come right back. Stay on us. Nevada leads at 24 to 13. Let's check in right now with Greg Kelsey. Thanks a lot, Ian. You know, Nevada's coach Trent Johnson done a tremendous job this year. His 25 wins, the second most since 1946. You know, it's a bit of a homecoming for him. He's a Seattle native, attended Franklin High School. And the other night, this crowd really got behind Nevada. He told his team today, you can't expect that. This is Zag territory, especially with Washington now out of the tournament. That's correct. Blake Stepp is off the mark from three-point range, and here comes Nevada with a chance to add to its lead. And Stepp missing also on a drive. Long three, Okerson. Unbelievable. The other night, shooting the basketballs, they touched on two for seven from the three-point stripe against Michigan State, but they were a big shot in the, the last few minutes of that basketball game, and he is stepping up early. Very, very confident player. Terry off. Just calls the defender. Oh, a foul! Number three on Rony Turion. Oh, what a critical call at the 11.08 mark first half. That should send him right to the bench. We'll take a look. Where's the discard? I'm not sure from that angle. Not sure from that angle. But I'll tell you what. That is a huge, huge foul call against him with this much time. Just about 11 and change on the clock. We'll see how the Zags re respond. Nevada has taken off since Turioff got into foul trouble. Pickney attacking. Follow, no. Tip it. Jermaine Washington getting his finger on it. They're really attacking inside because there really aren't many shot blockers with the Zags. One of the things, we talk about their inside game offensively. Defensively, they defend okay, but they're not blocking many shots. And right now, Gonzaga searching for offense. Violet, no. Rebounded by Pickney. The lead continues to grow for the Bulldogs. The deficit is 16. Good job by Mallon defensively just then. Hand in the right spot to deflect the basketball. Here's Steph looking to get on track. He draws the foul. Lake Step will shoot a pair. 10-17 mark, first half. Coming up, more second-round action. East Rutherford bracket, number 12, Manhattan, taking on number four, Wake Forest. Jermaine Washington called on his second foul for Nevada. And Blake stepped to the free throw line. 83% shooter. No good. Really pressing, really pressing. Whether you're looking for live scores, updated brackets from each game, or game center with in-depth play-by-play, you can find it all at cbssportsline.com. Step, the two-time West Coast Conference Player of the Year, one out of two at the line. A little switch up right now by the Zags. Go full court, 
Makes Nevada think a little differently. Snyder. Establishing position. He sure didn't. He just barely got away with it because he held his pivot foot, the left foot, on the floor long enough to regroup and then go up strongly with the ball. Six points for Snyder, and maybe even the best sign of all as Violet gets free for the two-handed dunk. Nevada has the big lead, and Snyder really hasn't gotten into a groove yet. Good point, and also another point, too, just then. Step with a good delivery to Violet. Snyder was defending him. He was out of position and let him dunk the ball without a challenge, so he's... He's basically taking a foul off the board to give them two points. That's a good decision defensively. Mozikas off balance along the baseline. Watch out for their runs now. They like to go up and down in transition. They're not going to put them away early in a basketball game. Allen on a crossover. And swatted away. Pinkney got a piece. Okerson driving on Rabio. Doesn't go. Uh, Takes it away from Skinner. Wasn't a good decision for Okerson on the three-on-three -three break right there, but stay with the play and steals it from behind. Okerson, the high man with 10 points. He's looking for Snyder inside. Now releases. Snyder, catch and shoot. A three. Book it. Little inside game right there. First for Tenger looking for Snyder on the blocks as a decoy. Screen down. He comes up. He shoots the ball effortlessly from that distance. He can go out another eight feet and shoot it that long if he wants to. Step. Trying to take on Hill Thomas. And a foul call. Right now let's check in once again with Greg Kelsey. Guys, for the most part, the interior defense by Nevada has been superb. Before the game, I talked to Trent Johnson. He said, we got prepared for this, trying to guard Michigan State. Paul Davis, Michigan State had 22 points in the paint in the first half. They were determined to not let that happen here in the first half against Gonzaga. And Greg, remember what they did. They got Davis into foul trouble in that second half and eventually led to the victory. A step call for the offensive. Step aggressive going to the rim, and he's picked up number two. I love the fact that he went this aggressively to the basket. You have to start making things happen, but who is it? It's Snyder, and look at Snyder. Right on the floor, look at him step across, gets his position, bang. Good decision, good job defensively. That's their player of the year, guys, stepping in, making a, a good step in defensive play. Three fouls on Turioff, two on step, two on Knight for Gonzaga. Snyder, air ball. From three-point range. Guess he proved me wrong. You can't shoot from out there, huh? Yes, he can. Just one of those shots that he misses. Coming up on eight minutes to play here in the first half. Skinner. Floater. Charge call. Just like we saw Snyder a second ago. Fizikas that time steps in. Mark Few does not like the call. But you know what they're doing? They're telegraphing. You telegraph the pass. They're telegraphing their drive. They're starting way out on the floor. And guys are just waiting for them underneath the basket. Now, from an opinion standpoint, I don't really, it's the right call, but I don't like the fact that defensively you can stand under the basket because it takes away a great move by an offensive player. So that's one I think needs fine, fine tuning there on the defensive end. Second foul on Skinner. Fouls piling up against Gonzaga. But just to complete that thought, Ian, it is the correct call that they're making. Paul. Now, there's a push. Pazikas. And Hill Thomas were inside. Gary Hill Thomas, his second foul. A timeout, Nevada. What a start. Blazing hot in this first half. Yes. Over the last six years, Gonzaga among the winningest programs in the nation. 28 and 2 this season. Their only two losses against number one seeds, St. Joseph's and Stanford. This is not a position they're all that familiar with this season as Violet gets the roll using the left hand. Good decision by Mark Pugh to come out and get Violet active again for his 10th point, but a beautiful step across just then. Goes to the middle of the floor. It's guarded. He's very, very quick with his footwork to get better positioning. Marcellus Kemp has checked in for Nevada, a Seattle native. Out of Garfield High School. Okerson takes the opening, the dish underneath. A lot of traffic. And a foul called along the baseline as Paul was hacked. Coming up Wednesday on CBS, Survivor's on a special night. What's gotten into the All-Stars that's making them so wacky? Don't miss Survivor All-Stars, a special night, Wednesday at 8, 7 Central on CBS, America's most-watched network.
Derek Ravio picks up the personal foul, the freshman. And Sean Paul, three-year starter, now coming off the bench for this Wolfpack team. Mark Few, foul trouble for his Gonzaga squad. And it has led to 11 free throw attempts for the Wolfpack. Now with 10 on the bonus, too, they'll be shooting doubles every time. Under seven minutes to go, first half. Morrison, the freshman. Pips. Oh, I like his confidence as a freshman. Gets right to the fray, not afraid to take shots, not afraid to really position himself. Zags, it's pretty simple from this point on. They gotta weather this storm and just hang around. Quick turnaround on a jump hook. Paul can't get it. Fazekas underneath. And taken by Morrison. Here's Ravio pushing tempo. Morrison. And a push called out front on the pass off. That'll put him to the line. 17 fouls the other side now. And that's number two on Kirk Snyder. Kevin Pickney checks back in, replacing Sean Paul. And Morris in a 71% shooter. Now the story has been well documented this year. Adam Morrison from Spokane, Washington suffered from childhood diabetes since the age of 12. As he connects on the first free throw, Morrison will check himself every time out. And if his levels are down, may have an apple juice or a power bar. And Mark Few and the trainer have come together to set up a regimen and routine for Morrison to function. Yeah, it's a double team really, actually with the trainer and Morrison. Once he comes off and tests himself, it's then his call to let Few know when he's ready to go back into the game. He's actually taking a step up to I and becoming a role model for kids with juvenile diabetes. Champ is off the mark. And Gonzaga now getting the crowd back into it. They're on a 6-2 run. They lead it. Nevada, 36-22. Good teams that had to weather storms, and they're usually very poised at the offensive end. Morrison, short, on a three ball. Fazekas, battling. Might be out of bounds, though, is he, or is there a foul? Mallon got into it with Fazekas underneath. And it is a foul on Sean Mallon. Two freshmen going head-to-head. -head. Yep, yeah, you see it just before. I don't think it was the foul when the ball was down low. I think the foul occurred up high. And pretty good work by both of these guys, though, too. That's the second foul on Mellon. And Fazekas at the line. Has shown steady improvement in his freshman season. Averaging 12.7 points per game, just under eight rebounds as well. Had a career-high 32 and a win over UTEP back in February. And he's a very good free throw shooter, as we just took notice just then. Two for two at the line right there, but 78% on the season. So he's a nice guy to be touching the basketball for a cross. 38 to 22. Snyder has to be very careful out in the perimeter. Violet forced into a fadeaway by Pinckney. 5.35 to play first half here in Seattle. Marcellus Kemp, the pull-up, long two forward. I asked Trent Johnson which guy on his team other than Snyder had to step up. Kemp was the guy he focused on initially. Kemp back home in Seattle. He's given about an 18-point lead. Gonzaga 22, field goal shooting. Wolf back at 48%, taking advantage of the free throws and the foul trouble Gonzaga's been in. And you just said it, the foul trouble just then right there, Ryan, 12 of them. That's huge in terms of the first half of this basketball team. 5-15 to play. First half, Violet misses the chipping, knocked around. Who's got it? Nevada does with Washington. Okasin finds the cutter. Fazekas, pull up. Oh, just get to every ball. Mark Hughes, irate on the sideline, looking for calls, but not getting them. Big shot kept, no. And a push underneath as Fazekas was able to position himself. Well, you'll see a lot of action down here. The soft shot. And watch the other side of the floor. I think it was right there. Morrison with the push. And Fazekas, I like the fact that Mark Hughes is not really happy with the few calls he's getting in his side of the floor. We'll take a look at the foul situation. And guess what? Everybody who's playing starting to pick up fouls, something that's going to really play into the second half, especially when you try to make comebacks. It's difficult if you're in foul trouble also. Adam 
Morrison, his first. Fazinkas at the line. Nevada, a free throw away from taking a 20-point lead in what is, in essence, a road game here in Seattle against Gonzaga. Spokane located 284 miles from this city. Largest lead of the day so far. 42-22. Wolfpack. About as good as you'll see, quote-unquote, on the road. Step lines it up. Shot it, a three, and a foul. Well, Pitt came out and tried to really react defensively. Van now all of a sudden getting involved. You talk about a huge shot for a couple of reasons. Number one, it puts three on the board with a possible fourth to step, but maybe it gets him on track, which I think is even more important than the four points. He's been documented as NCAA shooting has not been great. In fact, it's been very, very low in terms of the percentage. 26% from the field in NCAA tournament play, entering action for Blake Stepp as he completes the four-point play. Now you look at a game of four and a half minutes right now, and if you mark few and company, let's see, guys, how we can react for the last four-minute block of this first half and chop into this lead, and more importantly, get some confidence for the second half. Washington outside for Okerson. Snyder is on the bench right now for Nevada. That's a good move, too, with two fouls. Get him off the floor with the big lead. Fazekas off the rim. Took the momentum. You can feel it in the building. You can watch it on the floor with these guys. Step, pump fit, lines it up. No good. And rebound claimed by Fazekas. And it's funny, we talked about step in his shooting well as I talked to Mark Few before the game I said I know he's been shooting and struggling how do you feel about it? he said if this kid's 0 for 20 I still want him shooting the basketball in tough clutch situations step is one of five count no rebound picnic he's fouled hard by Richard Fox good foul though by Fox make him go to the line you're in trouble you don't have fouls probably one of the few guys with foul problems but here you see Pickney just staying away and it's a big strong foul you just got to be careful with the way you come down across the head a nice reaction, ready to go to the line for Pitney. Another guy who shoots over 70% from the line. Largest deficit this season for Gonzaga entering action today was 17 to Stanford. They've trailed by as many as 20 here in this first half to Nevada. And coming up Monday on CBS, the key evidence from a crime scene is stolen. Now CSI Miami must find it or a killer walks. Don't miss a new episode Monday on CBS. Nevada one of its last 10 from the field, but they continue to get to the free throw line. Pickney, one out of two. Three, and a guard to Manning. Step, no. Kept the rebound, Okus in the league end. Shot looked good though, Ian, he's gotta keep shooting the basketball. You gotta about, forget about stats. How about this? Oh, more three for Zekas. Oh, he doesn't look too comfortable out there. Huh? The big guy, I love that follow through. Very nice shot from long range. He's been doing it all season long. 33% shooter from out there. Morrison cans the quarter jumper. Well, I think what we're seeing right here too is seeing Nevada play in their consistent game. And all of a sudden now, Gonzaga is starting to get a little bit more of the chemistry, the consistency on their runs down the floor. But they really got to pack it in right now in this last two and a half. Nick Fazekas, 11 points, 8 rebounds. As Nevada turns it over, Morrison on a crossover. Oh, uh, tough shot. Adam Morrison. It doesn't always look good. Oh, you're right. But he is effective. Oh, Boy, as it gets the job done, that's all you can say about this kid, and they finally forced the hand to Brent Johnson to call a timeout. Eight points for the freshman. Adam Morrison. Freshman standing out here in the first half. 16-point differential here in Seattle, and coming up singular at the half, Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, Seth Davis will get you updated on all the tournament news, plus a live look at the action going on in the NCAA tournament and the singular one-on-one -on -one Billy Packer Trivia Challenge. That's all coming up on singular at the half. Nevada 46, Gonzaga 30. After the timeout, here's Okerson, the jumper. And rebound, fought for a tie-up, and possession arrow favors Nevada. Timeout with 2.14 to play. First half, back at this. 
46 to 30. Wolfpack leading Gonzaga. The numbers and trends develop over the course of time in this NCAA tournament. And here's one of them. At least one number 10 seed has advanced to the Sweet 16 in each of the last seven tournaments. Nevada, a 10 seed. A 10 seed. And Mark Few, I think, with that timeout, down 16 with 2.14 left. He's probably telling his guys, hey guys, we probably have five sets offensively and defensively here. Let's just really try to control three out of five if we can. There's one. A cough up. Kazika's got tied up. Like that, man. Whoa, oh, baby. Oh, oh, man. Jermaine Washington going over the scorer's table. Just watch at the end of this play. I and hopefully he's okay because he went over, down, and now at the end he loses control. Unfortunately, I think he misses his face and head on the second table right in here. Great job by those fans. And the writer is up there to help him out because right now he's in trouble, can't get his hands down, and they actually get their hands in front of him to save him from an injury. So great to see him pop right back up. Junior college transfer, the junior from Columbia, South Carolina. And he's back on the floor. And Snyder's still on the bench, which is important. He'll probably sit there with this big lead for the balance of the half. Step. lost it on the way up with a hook shot and rebound controlled by Nevada. Alkison getting to the floor very very low to get that ball up a very quick dribble bend down when the ball's loose if you can't grab it go down and smack it to the floor before it really dribbles up high get it about two inches off the floor out of the foot imagine what this lead would be if Nevada had stayed hot from the field they are two of their last 12 yet they're up by 16 and Washington draws the foul, going to the goal. One thing they continue to do well, and they've done it for the entire first half, is they've really looked for spots to run, but when not there, they've been comfortable and confident enough to set their half courts up, be patient, work the basketball around, and then look for a seam and, and go right to the basket with it. Second foul on Richard Fox, Jermaine Washington to the free throw line. 62% shooter, a minute 20 left to play in the first half. French Johnson, how about the improvement as Skinner comes in for Gonzaga in this program over the last five years? Nine wins, then 10 wins, improved to 17, 18, and now this year 24 wins for Nevada. Only team in Division One to do that, right? Over the first five consecutive seasons. And he's got a plan. That's so important from a coaching perspective. Make sure you have that business plan in place to build your team and get the support of the, the school around you. Their most wins, 24, since joining the Division I ranks back in 1969. 47 to 30. Under a minute to go, first half here in Seattle. Violet puts it on the floor, nine to shoot. Major foul trouble today for Gonzaga, including Roni Turioff with three. Step running one-handed. Instinctive play, that's what he really needed, to get an instinct type of play. Instead of being all by himself on the floor shooting, when you're by yourself, you start to think if you've not been shooting well, you doubt yourself. Instinctively, though, a great breakdown by Step to give him a little lift here. Seven points for Blake Step. High low with a crowd underneath. Washington couldn't lay it in. Reclaims it. Kemp, they can hold for one if they want to. Yeah. Kemp doesn't know it. That's a good call, and they made a mistake right there. Possibly one of the only few ones they made here. And what this allows now for Gonzaga to come down the floor after Steph just made that shot, try to chop into this 15-point lead. Seven seconds to go in the half. Step against Kemp. Loses it. One second. Step gets the shot off. Doesn't go for three. We all have time. That's the first half completed here at the arena. Nevada with a 47 to 32 lead. The Wolfpack undefeated this season when they lead at the break. 22 and 0. Greg Kelser standing by with Trent Johnson. Coach, really impressed with your interior defense. Maybe even more impressed with your ability to get to the free throw line and control the offensive end. Your thoughts? Well, we haven't shot the ball very well in about the last five or six games, and right now the ball's going down for us. So hopefully we can continue to do that and make good decisions. And this is a great basketball team we're playing, and I got to believe we're going to see a really great effort by them in the second half. Okay, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thanks a lot. Okay, guys, back here. 
Nevada 47, Gonzaga 32. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Sponsored by Singular Wireless, the wireless company that fits you best. Well, some of us are definitely surprised. Welcome back to our studios in New York and to Singular at the Half. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. The surprise one over there is Seth Davis. Our halftime score, Nevada leading Gonzaga by a score of 47 to 32. Take a look at some of the numbers here and consider Nevada in their victory over Michigan State two nights ago. Trailed by nine at halftime. They ended up winning today. They lead by 15 at the break. They've been the better team. They've been the more aggressive team. They've actually gotten to the foul line. You saw that discrepancy in free throws made and attempted. And Roni Turioff, Gonzaga's main post presence, is in foul trouble with three fouls in the first half. Let me beat Seth to it. We have another 20 minutes to go. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I'm, I'm glad to know that, too. But, you know, Gonzaga has just not done a good job adjusting to the refereeing in this game. I mean, Turiaf's third foul was definitely questionable, but, you know, the other calls have been very consistent. So the question for Gonzaga, Clark, is how long can they stay in that zone? Because at some t point, you've got to get out, pressure the ball, create offense that way. Well, in addition to staying in the zone, they've also got to make some shots. They've gotten good looks, and they need to get Turiaf back out there, but they've got to make some more perimeter shots as well. Mm. is just a half away from a major upset here in Seattle. Is the Second half action is coming up from Seattle. After this message and a word from your local station, you're watching the NCAA Basketball Championship. Right now. Masters on Fest 2000. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by McDonald's. Sprint. Marriott Hotels and Resorts and by Pontiac. Forty-seven to thirty-two as we get ready for second half action here at Key Arena. I and Eagle along with Jim Spinarco. Nevada's got the lead. This is a completely different situation for Gonzaga. A high seed, number two, highest in school history, but trailing. Usually they're dishing out right. this kind of storyline. They sure are. And the other thing to keep in mind too, how Mark Few will react, Diane. This is the only third time this year that a team has scored forty-seven points or more against them at a half, in a half. So they're shell-shocked, I think, a little bit, really, to be quite candid about it from the standpoint of where did this Nevada team come from and how did they get up on us so quickly early on in this game? Major problems for Roley Turioff. Three personal fouls. He does not even have a field goal attempt. 15-point lead. Turioff, no, follows. And puts it in. Good work off the second shot right there by Turioff. Get him involved. Get him back in this game. That's a great decision by Mark Few initially to come out here. The first cliche I to get out of the way. First four or five minutes of this half is unbelievably important as they turn the basketball over. Miscommunication with Oakerson on one side and Hill Thomas at the receiving end or a lack thereof. So the miscommunication and Nevada turns it over. We talked about the largest deficit this season for Gonzaga. It was 17 to Stanford. They lost that game by seven as Violet spins inside for the bucket. They're going to come a-knocking right now, and they're knocking on the inside door down low, and then watch out because Gonzaga is very good eyeing it, kicking the ball in. When you double down, they release the passes to the perimeter. Snyder gives up his dribble. Nevada led by as many as 20. Hill Thomas a jumper. Yes. Big shot right there early on in the second half to keep their confidence level up at the offensive end. 49-36, Nevada. Turioff going in with a purpose. Violet playing catch with himself off the backboard and then gets the bucket. Is this ever an easy game if you learn to play it five feet and in? And they've got some horses down low who get some real good energy in their body right now. I talked earlier in this game about the collective confidence in one team. It is totally shifted now to Gonzaga. They look like they're ready to play. Bridging the first and second half. It's a 12-3 Bulldog run. And a foul wow. called 
on the floor. Turioff has just picked up number four. Well, the problem there was the ball was entered underneath, and I believe with his left arm, he came out and reached with it. That's huge. Because they were really getting him active down low for this first minute and change. 49-38. Snyder knocked down on that jump shot. No call, and it's rebounded by Peckham. John Flockety tells him to get up and keep playing. Mallon looking down low. Violet wants the basketball, but he wants it to be swung left to right. Turing off on the bench, so the freshman Mallon in for Violet Leaner. Knocked away by Knight, and Snyder's got it for Nevada. We're looking to play this thing inside, that's for sure, and it's a good job by Mark Few to start his team out in the blocks as much as they possibly can, maybe create some fouling opportunities against Nevada. Fazika's big first half, 11 points, 8 rebounds. Snyder stops. Bill Thomas hit one from there earlier, drives in, can't finish. And in contact inside, it's going the other way. Just before the second half, Brett Kelser caught up with Mark Few from Gonzaga. Coach, I know it hurts losing and running carry off the foul trouble. As a result, Nevada really dominates inside. They get... 25 rebounds and 19 free throws. What are your adjustments for the second half? Well, we, we got to turn up our scrap meter. They, they seem like they beat us to every loose ball or every 50-50 ball, and we let the officials bother us a little bit. Too much there, and we just got to go possession by possession here and crawl back into this thing and and, uh, and make some plays down the stretch. We'll be all, we'll be all right if we change that uh, effort on those 50-50 uh, balls. So. Okay, Coach, good luck in the second half. Corey Violet fouled inside, and a chance for three as Fazekas picked up the personal hits first. And Gonzaga has gotten to within single digits. Is this beginning to sound like a home crowd? <laughs> it is very loud. And they're playing off it very well. Thunderous reaction after the Violet Deuce that he couldn't complete the three-point play. Three minutes gone by. Second half here at Key Arena. Zach staying in their 2-3 zone right now, and it's pretty active when need be. Actually given the look of a matchup now. They switched it back to a matchup, which means it's man-to-man -man when the ball is in your area. You pick up the next guy. Steph picks up Oberson right there. Bill Thomas feeds the post. Double team. The double team by Mallon just then. Paul. Jump ball. Nevada holds on to it. Possession arrow to the wolf pack. You know, the way this game is shaping up right now, everything that Gonzaga does on is kind of like that building the momentum one step at a time, building the foundation, and they're starting to really play together well. They know they're in trouble, but they got to regroup as a team. Shot clock down to one. Okerson left hand. He missed the rim and a shot clock violation. Once again, the little things, another block on the foundation, starting to go against Trent Johnson right now. Nevada, three of its last 18 from the field, allowing Gonzaga to rally. A little high-low action here. Step off the screen. And... They've kept their poise. Step with Jay, short. And he still has problems from the outside. Snyder whips a pass. Bill Thomas the finish and the foul. Steph, I believe, with the crossover, trying to get there quickly. Want to see quick passes? Watch this one from our left, looking at it to the right. Step with the body, the arm. Great finish by Hill Thomas on the blast out break. And the third foul on Blake Steph. Hill Thomas with eight points. 52 to 40, Nevada. Turioff is on the bench with four. Step now with three. And a foul called. Along the baseline, Hill Thomas using the body on Blake Step. And Gary Hill Thomas now with three oh, personal no, 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 fouls. A timeout. Possession by possession. That's the focus right now. Second round action in the NCAA tournament. Let's take a look at the tournament summary. 
four seeds, number 10 or higher, have advanced to the second round. Nevada, one of them. Xavier, Manhattan, and Pacific. Duke moving on. The lopsided win over Seton Hall earlier today. Right now, Nevada with a 52-40 lead on Gonzaga. Blake stepped to toss it in for the Bulldogs. Violet trying to establish position against Paul. They were trying to run that high screen for Step to get a shot off. Violet inside. Mallon turns. He's fouled. And why he's effective catching the ball down there. When he catches it, he doesn't really. Some guys, the big guys in particular, will catch it and think. Watch how quickly he gets into his shot. And then more importantly, he gets the ball up over his head in a hurry to get a shot up, even though he knows he's going to get bumped and bounced before the shot. Foul called on Sean Paul, his second with the help defense. And Sean Mallon, redshirt freshman, made the West Coast Conference all-freshman team as Blake Stepp is getting checked out. And a take job on that left arm. And Mallon waiting for the ball as Rabio is going to come in. And Blake Stepp is going to have to wait till the next whistle. Now we talked about keys to the game for Gonzaga. Right? Well, the feeling was establishing that down low presence, which they were able to do in the first round, but that early foul trouble changed the storyline. It sure did. And, and if ever putting, uh, you know, Turry up on the bench with his fourth, I thought we talked about it at the beginning of the game, establishing it, and they were trying to establish it right at the beginning of the second half. That fourth foul really threw them out of sorts and rhythm. Now they're going to switch a little bit here, Ian, and go full court, predominantly to take some time off the clock and get themselves going defensively. Nevada handles the pressure. Okasin, a look for three. Two strokes. And rebounded by Paul. He was pushed from behind. No call. And now a foul is assessed on Rabio. Mark Few wanted a walk. Now let's take a look. You see, there's the push. And now that would be a walk right there if there was not a push. So what's happening is, especially now, you got to look at the perspective here. We're looking at it down low with the officials, Ian. So is Mark Few. And the people in particular above, all they see is the walk. They don't see the push. So that's where more, most of this noise is coming from. The people upstairs who couldn't get the perspective of seeing what really happened. Here's the problem. They didn't call the foul on Mallon, who pushed him. They called it on Rafael. Well, on the phone. That's why I'm sitting here with you. I don't make the final decisions. <laughs> Sunday on CBS, who says the president dropped the ball on terrorism to go to war with Iraq? One of his own former White House advisors. Sunday on 60 Minutes. Paul hits one out of two. It's 53-42 Nevada. 15-24 to play in regulation here at Key Arena. And the first five minutes that we just talked about, how important it is a give the lead to the Zags right now for the first five minutes. We'll see what happens over the next five. And yeah. some activity. Kemp away from the ball. Foul step. So Mark Few is still calling Steps' number. Even though he's 4 for 20 in the two games here in the NCAA tournament, he's still confident in his player, and he wants to know Step. He's got to get Step thinking that, hey, I, I'm still confident in you. We're going to need you somewhere in this game. Keep looking for your shot. 15 foul against the Wolfpack. Mid post, back in, Violet. And missed it. Some good defense along the baseline. Sure was. Somebody got a hand in, I think, halfway up on his shot. Snyder puts it on the floor. He makes good decisions, too. When Snyder puts his head down to drive, if he gets double team, he's been making nice decisions to give up the ball. On the perimeter, Snyder uses the screen for the jumper. And missed it for three. Good balance, though, by Nevada just then. Long rebound sometimes acts as a pass out. Mallon, short. Trying to follow his own shot. Scrum for the ball. Mallon had it initially. And a tie -up. And that is what it's all about. And Gonzaga will retain possession. And just take a look at Mallon right now. The ball squeezes out. He's trying to pass it right there. And then it's protect your head. Put the helmets on and go after it. Adam Morrison checks in. Gonzaga 5-0 and all time here at Key Arena. They beat Missouri here back in December in a thriller, 87 to 80 in overtime. Neither team shooting it well in this half. Step 
Man, he cannot buy one from the perimeter. But you know what, I his shot looks good. I mean, he's shooting it confidently. There's hardly any hesitation in it. Guess what? You just have to keep shooting the basketball. He is 2 of 10 from the field. Nevada leading Gonzaga. Sean Mallon scores inside for the Bulldogs. 14-02 left to play. Nevada took the early lead, built it up to 20, and we have seen Gonzaga chip away here in the second half. And it's all about the mental edge right now. The first half, Nevada had the entire mental edge, and now it's shifting. Vizikas can't hit the three ball. Yeah. He stepped the other way. Zags with a whole lot of confidence right now. They need one to go down here. Step, no look feed. Look at Broke it up. Okasin. Here's Violet. Oh, denied by Fazekas. And intercepted by Okasin. A run out to the rim. He's got Morrison back there. And Okasin lays it in. Huge, huge play right there. I'm sure Violet had an opportunity down low, defended very well, and Step couldn't reach out and foul on that play because he's in a little bit of a problem also. 55-44, Nevada. Come up on 13 minutes to go. Second half. Out of bounds, and the Bulldogs will have it. Here's the Violet move. Hand on the ball. Good defensive play by Nevada just then. And then you see Step, the ball goes by him, and Orkerson goes the length of the floor. Big play just then. Two, a miss at one end and two down the other. Off the trigger, Violet against Pickney, who just checked back in for Nevada. Skinner swings it. Morrison sets the feet and connects a long two-pointer for the freshman. Yeah. Double digits to 10 for him. Just very, very poised basketball player. He is instant offense for Gonzaga. Ball movement. Pickney goes outside. Now it's Fazekas getting a touch. And fouled by Mellon. Third foul against Sean Mellon. It's simple, but they keep passing the basketball to the first guy who's open. Morrison really squares up. He goes down the other end, and here's the foul. I don't know. I don't know. A lot of them are going against Gonzaga this afternoon. Sean Mallon called on the personal Fazekas at the line. And hits on the first. His first point of the second half. He's got 12 to go along with nine rebounds. And Nevada once again up by double digits. Nick Fazekas, his dad played basketball at Idaho State. Joe Fazekas, terrific play just then by Fazekas then too. Tipping that basketball out after his miss. And a reset for Nevada. Snyder gives it up. Fazika spinning. Inside, he banks it in. Boy, he's, he's smiling right now. It's Snyder having a little bit of fun out there. Snyder bobbled the ball to him. He bobbled it and he finished it off. They come away with two and they say, how do we get it? I don't know. Let's go play some defense. Wolf back up by 12. Head and shoulder fake. Morrison, high arcing delivery. He's going right at Snyder, too. He's putting the press on him with the basketball. I'd love to see guys put the pressure on with the basketball. Dribble it with a purpose. The versatile weapon, Adam Morrison. The freshman is not rattled. Chet comes up short, and it's rebounded by Morrison. And Violet may have some blood on that left elbow. Yeah, there's a scratch, I believe. Actually, on the right, transferred to the left. <laughs> 10-point game, 11.54 left. Father and... As we check out the game summary, the stat that stands out, Jimmy, free throws, 18 of 24 for Nevada, Gonzaga, 6 of 9. I agree with you, and one of the reasons it does stick out, too, is in the Stanford loss, when they lost to Stanford, Stanford shot 14 for 20 from the line. They were only 6 for 8, so in losses, they've had problems getting to the line. Mark Few told us... This was their goal, the play in Seattle. When they saw the sights for this year's tournament, they zeroed in on that goal before the season, and they need the hometown crowd behind them now as Mellon able to clean up the step miss. Step goes up the ladder and throws a little flip air ball up there because it was well defended. He thought he may have gotten fouled. No call, but they end up with a bucket more importantly. It's an eight-point game, 11.28 to go, second half. Okerson makes his move, leads in, always fearless, going to the hoop. Claude Okerson, the six-foot, 165-pound senior from Western Kansas. For a second there, too, I thought Knight touched that basketball on the way up in its flight. And 
Okerson with 14. Spin move, Morris and a kick out. Mallon a pump fake. And a reset for Gonzaga. And even 11 minutes to play in regulation. 10 to shoot. Step, spin move on Hill Thomas. Leans in. Draws the foul. You know, what Step is doing is very important, Ian, because he's struggling from the field that we've touched on already. Two for 11. Same number that he shot in the first game. But what he's doing now is he's taking his game away from the perimeter and smartly attacking and trying to go to another one of his strengths of shooting the basketball from the free throw line where he's 83%. So Smarts takes over. You look at these numbers again. Boy, it's tough. Four for 22. Doesn't add up, but he's still at the line going for it. Lake Step who passed John Stockton for second on Gonzaga's single-season assist list. Max Santangelo, number one, and Stockton in attendance here in Seattle. This program has been taken to the next level with Mark Few. Six consecutive NCAA tournament appearances, but they have never been a number two seed, and that's a different brand of pressure in the early rounds. There's no question about it. He has done a terrific job with their team in building it, but now it's a different look as you just touched on. People are ready for them. They understand that they're a good quality basketball team. And by the way, I'm sure a few won't let them let up, and I don't expect to see any of them let up. This is going to be a real dogfight for the next 10.45. Nine points for Step on two of 11 from the field. Nevada leads by eight. Okerson has had the hot hand. Buries the three. We saw him bounce into one in the first half, and he comes back with a huge bucket. Morrison, no, trying to follow his own shot. And a foul call. And that will be number seven against Nevada. Morrison, one and one. You know, one of the weapons, Okerson, will shoot the basketball from long range. Trent Johnson said before the basketball game, he's one of the three guys I need to step up. He has unbelievable confidence. It just keeps coming at you constantly. Gonzaga, largest deficit that they overcame this season was 11. They trailed by as many as 20 in the first half. The game at San Diego during the regular season. And you wonder now what's going to happen from a mental edge too, Ian, in terms of the edge that Nevada had. Will they be able to stay at this mental edge where they keep their confidence up or will they get a little less confident? Nevada 63, Gonzaga 54. We come up on 10 minutes to play, second half. Pickney swings it, Hill Thomas. Two-man game and Pickney finishes. Now the quick passing also, interior passing and find the middle, find the gut of the floor against the zone. Nice little step throw. Nine points, six boards for Kevin Pickney. Roni Turioff has been a non-factor sitting on the bench for Gonzaga with four fouls. Drop step, Mallon, no. Tippin Violet, that won't go. And rebounded by Washington. Here's Okerson on the perimeter. Watch the two, three look they're giving right now. It breeds into a matchup. When the ball's in your area, you're gonna play man to man, but the middle of the floor is generally open. And Turion just oh, that checked off the bench as Washington lost sight of the man on the outside. He thought the official was his teammate. Sure did. He thought Terry Sitton was a player and unfortunately he's wearing the wrong color jersey. Let's check in with Greg Kelsey, Greg. Coming back into the game is Nick Vasikas. He spent a considerable amount of time on the bench nursing a bloody lip. His mouth is packed with gauze, but he's okay. He's back out there, ready to play. Now the freshman's not going to miss the quality minutes down the stretch, and he has played a terrific game. Called for the foul as Turia took it strong. And he'll go to the line for a pair. Third foul on Nick Vasikas. And if you have not been as a fan watching this basketball game to this point, what they just tried to do with Turry up is what they've been trying to establish the whole afternoon in terms of getting him the basketball in the blocks with Gonzaga. The problem is, as you touched on, the four fouls. When he was in there early, they plugged it down both at the beginning of the first half and the second half. Fouls just put him on the bench for an ineffective game so far. And he misses on the first free throw. Sunday on CBS, when America is taken hostage, they turn to this man to rescue them. Russell Crowe, Meg Ryan, and David Caruso star in the network premiere of Proof of Life. Sunday on CBS.
America's most watched network. And he misses on a pair. Rodney Terry on two points, one rebound, four personal fouls. And an opportunity maybe in the open floor to go at him a little bit. They'll try to get it to the blocks on his side on occasion, but don't force it in. Fazekas outside, pump fake. Okerson makes his move around Morrison. Okerson, wild attempt, doesn't go. Yeah, a little bit of a force. You don't need that right now. He's been playing under control for the entire game. Settle down. Step, pull up straight away. In and out for three. Violet offensive rebound. Leans in. No good. I thought Violet got fouled on his rebound just then. Not on the shot attempt, but on the rebound. Missed opportunities for Gonzaga on the offensive end. They're shooting 37% overall. And Steph at 2 for 12 continues to shoot. Fazekas off the mark. Rebounded by Snyder. And a little tangle up down low, maybe. That ball hit the rim iron. That's what they're talking about right now. The shot clock was reset. I have to ask you, you're a lot younger than I am, so your eyes work better. And by the way, I wear glasses full time. <laughs> I don't know if you got the memo. 65 54 Nevada. 8 23 to go, second half. Now how about this? Kirk Snyder has been held to nine points, yet he has had an effect on this game. And his team by a couple ditches. This is the Mr. Everything for the Wolfpack. Well, keep in mind, too, when he's off, he does a lot of different things when he's not scoring in the WAC championship game. How's the number 14 rebound sound? So he's used to doing different things if he's not playing well. But don't, you know, he's not going to go away. He's a factor offensively. Stripped to the ball. Pitney, scrum for it. Snyder okay. cannot get it off. And a jump ball call. Possession arrow in favor of Nevada. That was just terrific basketball on both sides of the floor right here. You see them scramble. And a great jump up there by Turioff with his fourth foul. Very, very risky. Oh! Three. Here he comes, right here, upstairs. Where is everybody? Nobody's home. Whoa, sending the message. 67-54. Pickney now with 11 points, seven rebounds. And tack on one more. And I looked over at Trent Johnson just then. I could almost see his heart pounding through his suit and his tie and his shirt over there after that one. That bench is getting fired up. Tony Skinner was called on the foul. Five team fouls against Gonzaga. Turned by Turioff for two. Well, can he get inside any time he wants against his team? It's a shame from Gonzaga's standpoint that he has so many fouls early on in this basketball game. But there is still plenty of time. Just the second field goal of the day for Ronnie Turiel. It's a 12-point disparity. The travel. Nevada 68, Gonzaga 56, 7, 38 to go. Second half. We're coming back to Seattle in a moment. Major storyline here this afternoon, Ronnie Turioff, early foul trouble, picked up his fourth early in the second half, and has been basically a non-factor, four points, one rebound. And they'll probably go to him, watch for a defender to try to flop, they get a double kick this then. Skinner touched it last, turnover Gonzaga. 7.28 to play. Second half here at Key Arena in Seattle. Nevada has led by as many as 20. Currently up by 12. The number 10 seed in the St. Louis bracket. Two nights ago, they won their first ever NCAA tournament game. A come from behind victory over Michigan State. Here they've led it from the very beginning. And you don't want to be too patient here. Sometimes teams are settling to take it just time off the clock and forget to play offensive basketball. Snyder open three. Cans it. Well, two for eight prior to that shot. He doesn't go away. He's a big timer, and that was very well done at the offensive end. 12 points, five rebounds for Kurt Snyder, the WAC player of the year. Comes out and able to answer with Skinner. 
71-59. Nevada has been better from long range here today with six and a half remaining. Just a little isolation for Pinckney. Jump up, long rebound to step. Every trip so important with Gonzaga down the floor. Lake step, two of 12 from the field. He's been held to nine points. Morrison, no. Curry off the rebound. Takes it straight and slams it down. Well, that's a big time play on the right side of the floor. Number one, to track the basketball down. Number two, not falling out of bounds. And number three, to come right at it and drop it through for the two. It's a 10-point game. Fazekas, the leaner. And rebounded by Curry off. Into the hands of Steph. Becomes one of those shifts of momentum. Morris in the back end. Swings it. Skinner. Open look at a three. No. Rebound. Controlled. Out of bounds. Bill Thomas. Unable to gather in. Here comes that slam. Turry up going along the baseline. A good rebound. Staying away from the out of bounds. And then the finish. Turry off a little shove with four fouls on the offensive end to make sure Fazekas didn't get a hand in. I was more concerned with Bill Thomas coming this way at us. Almost barreled <laughs> into my partner. Step needs it. Can't get it to drop for three. And knocked out of bounds. Nevada will have it. Blake Step, what a struggle it has been in NCAA tournament play. And that shooting statistic is going the wrong way. It's Snyder to Pickney. Good decision by Snyder to bust it down the floor. Gonzaga not ready to play defense. Rabio a three. Rebound. Snyder's got it. Just over five minutes to go. And now time becoming a factor for Gonzaga. It sure is. And they kind of feel it slipping away a little bit right now. Where they had a momentum rush for about a minute ago. Snyder. Uh oh! Big time three. They may have to regroup right now. They don't want to, but they may have to. Yep, there's the timeout with a huge 15-point lead. Big-time shots by Snyder. Kirk Snyder on target from long range. Nevada opens it up. Round play from the St. Louis bracket. And Trent Johnson's Nevada Wolfpack in front, 76-61. to 61. This Nevada team was favored to win the WAC, and Johnson told us the toughest thing to do is go out and win something you're supposed to win. His team came through there in the tournament and looking for a second-round victory against the number two seed, Gonzaga. Turioff is off the mark. A 10 seed always seemed to emerge in the NCAA tournament. Seven consecutive years, a 10 seed has advanced to the Sweet 16, and Nevada is hoping to make it eight in a row. And the mission now is to take some time off the clock. Be smart with the basketball, but still play. 15 seconds or so on the shot clock. Go at it at the 10-second mark. 10 to shoot. Pickman looking. Shot clock down to five. Into the hands of Snyder. Gives it up and knocked away with three seconds left. On the timer, Nevada will hold on to it. They lead by 15. 4.08 left. First NCAA tournament appearance since 85. They have never been to a Sweet 16. Pitney and air ball. Curry off the rebound. We will hit the four-minute mark. Second half. Step leans in. No call. Can't get it to drop. Knocked upstairs. Curry off. Got it. It's good. And the foul. Now step from the outside trying to force the action. They don't have any choice but. And then have your big guys go after the glass. There's the four shot. The violet down low. Here comes Curry off in behind them for the finish. And the end one opportunity. Running Turi off to the free throw line. Nick Fazekas, four personal fouls. Turi off, limited action because of the foul trouble here this afternoon. He is 0 for 2 from the strike, a 71% shooter. And he completes the three point play. 76 64, second half. Gonzaga basketball history. They have graduated from Cinderella status, earning a two seed in this year's NCAA tournament. Blake Steph has been an unselfish star during his four years at Gonzaga, but 
in the NCAA tournament. Steph's numbers have not been there. Not the ones that he's accustomed to putting up. And he is struggling again here today. Two of 14 from the field. Nevada 76, Gonzaga 64 with 3.54 left in the second half. And yeah, the Steps numbers are 2 for 11 versus Valpo. We'll see if they have one two-minute run in them right now to make something happen. Plenty of time to work with on the shot clock. Snyder holds with 20. Fazekas will fire and hits. Uh, the beauty of that is Snyder turning down a shot right there. He's hit a couple from long range. Physique is very, very smooth as a young player to hit one big, big time shot at 3.30 or so. 16 points, 10 rebounds for the freshman. Violetta, three, missed it badly. And Snyder with a rebound. Snyder gets it across. That pass too hot to handle for Fazika and Nevada did not need it. And not a good decision. Nevada in front of Gonzaga. 3.13 to go in the second half. First good shot. You have to go with it unless somebody's open underneath. Uncharacteristic three-point try from Violet on the last possession. Now they'll go inside. Turioff powers his way through. Can't convert. And the rebound to Snyder. And can't convert when Snyder needs the basketball. He just flat out goes and gets it. That's number nine on the rebounding side for him. Knocked away by Steph. Hill Thomas has it for the Wolfpack. Under three minutes left. And a 30-second timeout called by Trent Johnson. We will step aside with 2.41 on the clock. A 14-point Nevada lead. Let's check out the CBS Sportsline stat of the game. It's free throw shooting. And Nevada has taken advantage of the foul trouble Gonzaga's been in all day. Get complete tournament coverage at cbssportsline.com. And that's at the tone. Those early fouls on Turioff. Okuson gives it up. Picking the pump fake. And banks it in. Boy, Okuson ever playing a solid game of basketball. Just that terrific decision slicing through. Step the other way. Close it home. It's a 14-point game as we approach two minutes to go. They're going to have to really double-team and try to foul right now. Take any gamble they possibly can with the clock working against them. That's number one enemy. Snyder in trouble and loses the ball. A turnover. Step the other way. And step. A blocking foul called on Okerson. And once again, that's all Step can do right there is take it to the basket, try to stop the clock and get to the free throw line. Wilkerson moving a little bit, but he sure did have chest-to-chest -chest position established fairly well on that drive. Lake Step. 26% from the field in his career in the NCAA tournament. 3 of 15 today as he hits the first free throw. And make sure you vote for your starting forward on the all-time tournament team. You can cast your ballot now at ncaasports.com slash Pontiac. Steph can cut it to 12, and he does. With 1.59 on the clock. Well, you have to just continue, as I said, gamble as much as you possibly can right now. Don't worry about guys fouling out of this basketball game. Just make smart defensive plays and go for it as much as possible. Here's some numbers, though. Flip it ahead. Hill Thomas with Snyder and Pitney for the big finish. See, some teams pull it back just that I They have done that very, very well over the last eight minutes of this basketball game. In spots, they have really attacked when you least expect. Great job by Nevada, that trip. 1.48 to go. It's 82-68 Nevada. Step. Get it out of there. Kirk Snyder with the left hand. And here we come down. Watch for the little slip pass. Here we go. You lure defenders. Violet that trip coming at him. Bang. Finish it off. Go the other way. Gonzaga has to work quickly here. A minute 40 left. Terry off. Loses the ball. Nevada closing in on a sweet 16 burst. Foul called with 1.32 on the clock. Blake Step, his fourth. And Gonzaga now feeling what it's like to be on the other end of a Cinderella. Mark Few has used that storyline to his advantage in the past, but now 
It's Nevada that has emerged. Hill Thomas is fouled. 17 foul against the Bulldogs. And the fourth on Skinner. Yeah, that's the good and bad of building your program up to an elite status, Ian, is that you can sneak your way up and build and build and build. And then when you get to the top, guess what? Everybody's aware of where you're sitting. And you become the marked men. This is a terrific effort overall. The team Nevada that was not intimidated by a record coming into this building. Nevada had to rally to beat Michigan State, 72 to 66 in the first round. There was no come from behind needed here. They came out strong and maintained it throughout. 127 left. Step can't get that three to go. Hill Thomas the rebound. Step is one of 11 from three-point territory. And three of 17 on the day. And Morrison called for the foul. Second foul on Morrison. 111 showing on the clock. And Opus into the line. First free throw, Todd Okasin. 18 points for the senior. His career high is 19. He did it against Rice back in February. And he's matched it in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Nice time to come up big with six assists also and led the charge here with very few turnovers. Eight on the day for the team. Turry off the back end and the finger roll. One minute to go. Robinson ahead. They keep attacking. Pitney with a two-handed slugger. Gonzaga trying to foul. They're saying, no way. We're just going at it. And Opeson gives us his little dance once again out there. Cherry off the dunk on the other end. It's all cosmetic now. 54.5 remaining. And Gonzaga will back off. Right, Mark Few telling him to go back. Gonzaga here in Seattle. They have to shoot one more time, though. The Bulldogs had a tremendous draw playing basically a home game at Key Arena, 284 miles away from Spokane. Snyder at three. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah, big time. The icing on the cake and finish it off in style. 91-72, step can't hit. Rebounded by Pickney. Final 20 seconds here at Key Arena. Trent Johnson puts the hand up and says, that's enough, guys. We've made our point for this afternoon. What a terrific effort and game plan establishment by Nevada. The glass slipper has been passed from Spokane Arena. Nevada is going to its first ever Sweet 16. 91 to 72, they pull off the upset of the tournament. Over Gonzaga. Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Todd Okuson, 19 points, four rebounds for Nevada. Corey Violet, another double-double to end his collegiate career. Nevada in their first NCAA tournament appearance since 1985. 19 years in the making. And the Wolfpack advance. Big second round victory over Gonzaga. And yes, a 10 seed has moved on for the eighth consecutive year. Let's send it to Greg Gunnell in New York. All right, Ian, thank you. And Gonzaga now two and four over their last six turns.